Bonjour à tous. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Patrick Leblanc. I'm an uh, associate professor in the Graduate School of Public and International Affairs, and I welcome you to the University of Ottawa uh, for a talk uh, on something that has been uh, uh, in the media for uh, quite a while, a few years, uh, and with a lot of, I would say, Euroscepticism, uh, especially uh, on, this, uh, on this side of the Atlantic. Uh, anyone who's read uh, Canadian and, and American newspapers uh, know that, um, well, the views on the Euro and the Eurozone crisis uh, has generally been quite uh, skeptical, if not negative. Uh, and today, well, we have uh, an expert on, on these issues and someone who's been uh, closely associated uh, with uh, the Euro and, and, and you know, the European Union for, for many years, uh, Professor Dr. Georg Milbrat, uh, who is uh, coming here from Germany uh, to talk about the Euro and uh, uh, the title of his uh, talk, A Currency in Search of Its State, uh, The Prospects. Uh, the future prospects of the Euro. Um, and uh, Professor Milbrat uh, is currently uh, um, professor at the Technical University of Dresden. Uh, he is the chairman of the board of the Forum of Federations, which is based here uh, in Ottawa. Uh, uh, and uh, recently he was uh, appointed as vice president of the Independent Advisory Committee of the German Stability Council. Uh, so an important uh, position uh, for all of you who know about uh, the various uh, fiscal discussions within uh, the Eurozone and the EU and, 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 and the pressures on Germany to do its share uh, for the Euro. Uh, so uh, certainly he's uh, both an actor and at the same time uh, someone who has um, uh, uh, ob observatory uh, position. So uh, we're very fortunate to have him here. I should also mention that uh, he uh, was involved in politics uh, for a very long time as the, uh, as we would say here, the premier of the state of Saxony uh, from uh, 2002 to 2008 and then as uh, before that for 10 years as finance minister for the state of Saxony. Uh, so he brings a wealth of both theoretical and practical uh, knowledge to us and uh, I um, invite you to uh, welcome Professor Dr. Gerot Milbrad. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm no longer a politician. I'm retired. I'm back in the university and uh, uh, therefore I am a little bit more critical than I was when I, uh, I was in the position of uh, a politician because as a politician you are not allowed to do all things which you want to do and to say all things which you should do and this has altered uh, since I'm, be, I'm back at uh, the university. Uh, I have uh, uh, given uh, my talk the title uh, currency in uh, uh, search uh, of a state. Um, the problem is that in uh, economic history you can find no example of a currency union which uh, uh, has not failed. The problem is that for a currency union you must have some central authority in one way or the other, especially uh, if um, uh, the zone of the currency uh, union is very inhomogeneous. If, there is, if it is uh, uh, homogeneous, then it can survive so long as there is homogeneity. But uh, if, there are, uh, if, there is, uh, if there is divergence, then you become uh, uh, problems. You, you get problems. And uh, therefore, um, we have to solve with the euro crisis in one way or the other to find a state. Otherwise, uh, the child has no uh, parents and uh, it will not survive. So that is my um, uh, personal view. Uh, if you, uh, if you are talking about uh, uh, the Euro crisis, I will begin as a doctor. Uh, first, the medical history, then uh, the diagnosis, and then uh, the therapy. And uh, we begin with uh, medical history. Uh, as I said, uh, no currency union has survived. Uh, the EU uh, was not a coronation, that was a German position of a political union, uh, but it was a means to uh, achieve it. 
So, uh, you have to go back uh, to the late 80s. Uh, at that time, uh, French uh, President Mitterrand wa wanted the uh, Council Union and uh, Chancellor Kohl was, uh, 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 wanted it too, but they had two different uh, perspectives. Uh, perspective. um, Kohl wanted it to get his uh, uh, the, uh, political union, and that means a federal union, a federal uh, European state, uh, which he always had dreamed of uh, since his uh, um, early years as a politician. But that was not the dream of uh, Mitterrand. He wanted uh, to uh, Europeanize uh, the old Bundesbank. Uh, and um, so Kohl had, uh, uh, at that time, uh, uh, the perspective or the wish that during the introduction of the euro, which took more than eight years, it would be possible to create this political union. But he was wrong. When he had made the concession to a, a common currency, especially France was no longer interested to uh, really transfer sovereignty to a central state. And because of the enlargements, uh, the European Union had other problems to deal with. And therefore, the, a real political union uh, never become, uh, uh, became into existence. Uh, the rules of this currency union were inadequate and uh, were not uh, executed, and especially, uh, as I said, no uh, transfer of sovereignty. And that is the problem we have today. We have to solve this uh, faults uh, of the beginning of the euro in some way or other. Now, uh, I show you this uh, uh, slide. It uh, shows uh, uh, the interest rates of 10-year government bonds uh, uh, from uh, uh, the beginning 1985 uh, up to uh, today. Mostly, you only see in graphs in uh, academic uh, uh, papers uh, the last 10 years or so. But to really understand uh, uh, the problem, we have to see the whole, uh, um, uh, the whole history from the beginning of the euro. And um, here is, that is Greece. Uh, uh, you can imagine why. <laughs> uh, 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 and that is, I think, uh, uh, very important. Uh, you have here the Madrid summit. At that summit in uh, uh, 95, it was uh, 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 decided definitely to introduce the euro. Uh, the uh, uh, treaties were uh, passed. Uh, that was not the problem. But now uh, we began to uh, really introduce the euro. There was the Madrid summit. Uh, then the next was in uh, 90, uh, 1998, when uh, the uh, exchange rates between the currency were fixed and the participants Participants of the Eurozone uh, uh, were, uh, uh, were uh, known, and then came the introduction as a virtual um, uh, uh, currency uh, 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 in the banks and uh, bills and coins uh, a little bit later. 2002, and uh, the, in the case of Greece, uh, Greece joined the currency union not uh, in the early stage, but became later a member in 02. What you see here, and that is very important uh, to understand the economic dynamics uh, of this process, is that um, the interest rates converged, converged. Why did the interest rates converge? Before the euro, uh, there was for a foreign investor an exchange rate risk. And especially in the case of southern periphery, mm, which had a history of devaluation, uh, uh, an investor has uh, to fear that during the time of uh, uh, his bond, uh, there would be a devaluation. And therefore, he must uh, ask for, uh, um, uh, for a spread uh, to uh, cover this uh, additional risk. When being a member of a currency union, the risk changed. There is no longer a currency uh, exchange rate risk, but you have a default risk. That is very important. When you have your national currency, you cannot default in your own currency, because you can print it as long as you want. 
But if you are indebted in a foreign currency, you can get into a default. And that was the problem here. The euro is, for the euro members, technically seen a foreign currency. And therefore, there was a risk of default. It was not the, uh, the case before, but the markets did not see the risk, or they thought from the beginning that there should be or would be a bailout. In the, uh, in the uh, Maastricht Treaty, there was a no bailout clause, just the opposite. But during this time, uh, uh, the banking regulation were as follows that each sovereign debt had a zero uh, default risk. That was, the uh, that was the view of the regulators, and that meant that uh, banks could buy as much sovereign bonds as they want without any equity capital. And that they did. And therefore, uh, the interest rates converged uh, up uh, to 07, 08. 07, 08, you know, uh, there was a, 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 a subprime um, crisis bubble in the United States. Uh, a bank uh, got into trouble, and uh, the investors were uh, aware or became aware of the risks. And at that time, they, cl uh, uh, they looked um, closer to the risk in the Eurozone, and they saw that a lot of countries had uh, accumulated public debt, uh, which was not sustainable, but, and that is uh, uh, also important, which is neglected in public uh, discussions, private debt. Private debt. Uh, not only public debt, for instance, in, uh, uh, in uh, 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 Greece it was public debt. In uh, Ireland and in Spain it was private debt, debt uh, for financing uh, uh, a bubble in the real estate market. And then, uh, what you see here, uh, the spreads uh, came back again. And then uh, the euro states, uh, especially those from the periphery who had, who had uh, to tolerate uh, the spreads of the market said, well, we are not longer able to finance our debt because the interest rates are too high. If you compare the interest rates here with the interest rates he here, it's not true. Why couldn't they uh, uh, or uh, why they not able to bear this, uh, uh, higher interest rates? Because they had consumed all the advantages of a lower interest rate either in uh, increasing their social uh, benefits on, on the state level or paying higher wages in the private sector. So this advantage was consumed and the problem with economics is you cannot turn the clock back. Not so easily. Upwards is always uh, 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 very easy, but the other way, that's a problem. It's like a ratchet effect. Yeah, and here you had uh, the euro crisis uh, at its uh, maximum in uh, 2012 uh, with uh, uh, the haircut, which was a bankruptcy uh, of uh, the Greece state. And that is the situation we have today. Uh, still, there are a lot of uh, spreads, but they became a little bit uh, 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 smaller than they used to be in 2010 and 2011. Here you see the results, accumulated inflation rates, Greece 67, Germany on the other side 12, and uh, that is a real problem. If uh, you become 50% more expensive than your competitor, you're out of the market. That's a problem. So the problem is not, as the politicians say, that the markets, the financial markets, 
did not react correctly, that there is speculation or so, the problem is the divergence in the real economy. The real economy is not in, uh, in equilibrium. That is the darknesses of our euro problem. The difference in interest rates is a symptom of the crisis. The cause of the crisis is the imbalance, uh, uh, the uh, disequilibrium in the real economy, which occurred not in 08 or the 010, so not occurred, uh, uh, sorry, uh, mixed. Uh, 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 which occurred in the time between 95 or let's say 99, at the beginning of the year end 08. So during this uh, 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 time of uh, a wonderful world, uh, the uh, problems occurred or that developed and in the crisis of 010 to 012, uh, they became open to the public. But the real problems, as I said, developed before the crisis. So it's not the Lehman Brothers uh, problem which, um, uh, which is the cause of the crisis. Uh, it, uh, it's uh, the time when, because of Lehman Brothers, uh, investors be became, of, uh, be became aware of the problem and reacted. So if you are uh, uh, more expensive than the others, you get a uh, uh, foreign, uh, foreign account deficit, and that is a problem here. You see uh, Greece has a minus 12 plus 5 percent. Uh, that means they, uh, the Greece economy consumed or invested 112 percent of what it produced. That you can go, they can do for some time, but as you see here, it's not only one year, six years, and uh, uh, all uh, uh, the time you had uh, this uh, current account deficit. So, as an economist, uh, a current account deficit is not per se uh, uh, something uh, which is uh, bad for an economy. Uh, it depends, uh, as always in uh, uh, econ economics, on the circumstances. If, for instance, you import capital for investment and the investment is productive, then you can pay back your debt with the growth of your investment. No problem. You are afterwards better off. But then you pour the money you get from abroad into consumption or into bad investments, you get a problem. And in reality, um, the money was overwhelmingly used not uh, for, um, um, uh, for productive investments. There were, for instance, uh, uh, um, uh, used for investment, for instance, in uh, the case of Greece, for building uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, areas uh, or building for the Olympic Games. Well, that is uh, a nice thing to do, but uh, uh, you will not improve your competitiveness after uh, the end of uh, the Olympic Games. And uh, if you buy too many houses, like in Ireland, which nobody uh, 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 needs, uh, then uh, uh, it's a, um, a bad investment, which will not improve uh, your future. On the other side, uh, you had uh, the... Uh, 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 the other countries, uh, especially Netherlands, Luxembourg is a, uh, Luxembourg is a special case, especially Netherlands, Germany and Finland, which, has a, uh, which had uh, during the time a surplus, um, and uh, they uh, 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 were those who consumed or, that, or, uh, uh, or invested less than they produced. So uh, part of their production went um, uh, to other uh, countries. Well, the same is here, a surplus in the current account uh, 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 balance is not an advantage, per se. In the old French theory of mercantilism, well, they say 
uh, surplus, then I can have, have more gold. And then the uh, country becomes more mighty, because then she can afford to have a, a bigger army and uh, all this uh, um, um, uh, uh, kind of uh, arguments. But in modern economy, to have a, a, a surplus is nothing which is per se good. Because when you export more than you import, you have to export capital. So, the same amount, because your customer can only buy your goods if he got a credit from you. So you become a debtor of your customer, a, a, a creditor of your customer, and the customer is a debtor. Well, that is not so bad in the beginning, especially when uh, there is a chance of repaying uh, uh, the debt, especially when in former, in, in, uh, in, uh, um, in the next years there will be a reversal of the situation, and especially in the case of Germany, it would be very profitable because of our demography. If we uh, save a lot of money, invest it abroad, then we can bring it back when the, uh, the demographic crisis hit. That was what uh, uh, was in the German mind. So, a win-win situation. But, if the debtor is not able to repay his debt out of current, uh, uh, current production because he is not, um, uh, uh, not uh, uh, competitive enough, there are only two solutions. Either you get wealth from the uh, from the debtor. That means Germany becomes the owner of uh, uh, land or factories in these countries. Or, if that is not possible, you have to write off your claims. So that means, in reality, you have produced gifts. Not a very attractive business model <laughs> for a country that is different for a business. For Mercedes, for instance, Daimler, it's not a problem to sell all the cars to Southern Europe because as a company you don't give the credit to your customer. That is done by the banking system and indirectly by your state. So the export industry in Germany is very front of this model because the problems of the surpluses are problems of the taxpayer. So this model works like an export sub uh, subsidy. And therefore, when uh, a lot of politicians now say Germany is a winner of this policy, you have, this, uh, do, you have to look closer. The export industry is a winner, and the uh, economy as a whole is not the winner. In former times, before the Euro, the, uh, the dynamics were different. When there was an export uh, surplus, the so DMAC had to revalue. By revaluation, the others became more competitive, and uh, the gains of productivity not only were distributed in the export sector, but in the whole economy. But this model privileged the export sector and the trade unions in the export sector. And in Germany, they are very uh, important. Uh, the business uh, um, is uh, uh, well, uh, very, uh, uh, very mighty, and uh, the trade unions too. And uh, so they were always for this sort of model. But as I said, it depends on the chances of your debtor to repay uh, uh, the um, the debt. As you know, this didn't happen. 
and uh, private investors no longer were, uh, uh, were um, uh, willing uh, to finance uh, this, uh, uh, this process because they saw the risks and uh, were no longer, um, uh, well, as I say, willing to bear these risks. Just in the opposite of the years short after the introduction of the euro. Well, because they had new experiences since Lehman Brothers. So we have to, well, to, uh, to finance this old business uh, model longer, then you need, if you have, there are not private funds, public funds. And that began with the so-called rescue funds, that is uh, the top here, um, and uh, pledge to date is uh, 436 uh, uh, billion uh, uh, euros. But that is not enough, as you see here, two-thirds of the whole amount is financed by the ECB, because uh, uh, it is no longer possible to, or the parliamentarians are not, no longer willing to uh, uh, agree such a high amount of help, uh, which is necessary to stabilize this, uh, the situation. Therefore, the real rescue fund is the ECB. The ECB becomes the lord of the game. And here is what uh, happened, and that is a problem, not the problem of today, but the problem of tomorrow. <coughs> Where you can say, by the intervention of the ECB, they have stabilized the system financially. So, in the markets, there is no longer a problem. But the uh, 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 central bank cannot solve the problems in the real sector. The lack of competitiveness that you are not able to do. So what the ECB can do, they can fix it temporarily, the problem. This might be a good idea if in the meantime the politicians, the economists, or all uh, which are involved in the process find a solution for the real problem. You are very ill and have fever. Uh, the doctor gives you some pills to reduce the fever, but th that will not cure your, um, uh, your illness. It only cures the symptoms. And that is what is the situation of today. And what uh, does the, uh, the uh, ECB? Because the national governments, especially the parliaments, are no longer willing to do this. The, uh, the, uh, the ECB comes in, uh, and that is a position or a function uh, which is not, uh, um, uh, which is not uh, found. You cannot find in the treaties because uh, original nobody wanted this to do. Just the opposite, because the ECB was formed as a model of the old Bundesbank. This was totally out of question to do this uh, by German standards, but uh, as you know, uh, we have to, uh, 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 to alter the rule of the games legally or half legally or so. Uh, and um, to avoid the collapse of the system, uh, the, uh, the ECB had to print money. How does this function? Uh, for uh, a lot of economists who only think in central states, uh, it was uh, for a long period not known how this uh, functions in a currency union. It's very different from the situation in a, uh, in a situation one state, one currency. What I was not aware three or four years ago was that was that there is no, in, uh, in Europe, not only a European central banks, but there are national central banks as well. So it is not the ECB who governs the process, but the ECB system. 
and the EDB system consists of the ECB and the national central banks. The, S S uh, the, cent uh, the national central banks are not subordinated in all respects to the ECB, but can uh, uh, have their own policy. And they can give their, na their uh, national banking system credit. So that means they can print money. There is a clause in the, uh, in the treaties that that is not allowed if a two-third majority in the council is against it. But never it was possible to find a two-third majority for printing money in the South. And they did it. And as I say, it was necessary to stabilize the system. Now you ask, why is there no inflation? If they are printing, printing, printing. Well, the process is as, as such. The money is printing in the South. With the money, debt is repaid, public, uh, private debt, and uh, an excess of Im uh, if imports is uh, paid to the North. And now it's in the banks of the North, the private the banking system. So long as the North is no longer willing to recycle the money back to the South, the money goes, in the case of Germany, to the Bundesbank. And when the money is at the Bundesbank, it's out of the cycle. So Kolov Afmin says, we have the printing press in the South and the shredder in the North. And uh, 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 that means there is no increase in the money um, uh, 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 in money, um, but it's only created uh, differently. In the United States, you have a, a similar system of the district feds. The district feds can have their own um, business with their local uh, with, uh, local banks, but there is a settlement. Uh, 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 each year. At the uh, uh, 1st of April, the accounts have to be settled. That was missed or not written in the contracts. So we have no settlement uh, uh, system at the moment in the ECB. So, and uh, uh, to reduce the spreads further, the ECB had to announce this outright uh, uh, monetary transaction, which means, in reality, that the ECB guarantees the private banks that in case of a spread or default, not the default, short before the default, they will buy back uh, uh, the bonds. So, for the banks in the north, it's not longer risky to invest in the south because you get an implicit guarantee by the ECB. And that took place during the last uh, uh, year. The interest rate spreads diminished, not to zero, but to a large extent. So, you have problem solved. That is what some politicians say. But you have not solved the problem. The problem in the real economy. And you have a problem concerning the ECB. Nobody in Canada would think that it is a good idea if the, uh, uh, the Central Bank of Canada is active in the markets to buy bonds of, say, Ontario to save Ontario. Ontario is, as I heard, very heavily indebted. It would be a nice idea if the Central Bank of Canada buys Ontario bonds. Nobody would do it. They will buy not Ontario bonds, but Canadian bonds. But there is no possibility to, to buy European bonds. 
Uh, first argument, the EU is not the Eurozone. And second argument, the EU is not allowed to finance its um, uh, uh, expenditures by uh, credit. So the only possibility would be to have a, uh, some sort of a basket so that if you intervene in the market, you have to say, let's say, 30% German bonds, 2% Greek bonds, because that is the relative weight of the Greek economy, and they, they let's say, 20 or 22% French bonds and 18% uh, Italian bonds, or so on. But that would not solve the problem. So in, in reality, the ECB must not make a monetary policy, she must excuse a regional distributional policy to stabilize the system. But that is not their duty. This is a parliamentary decision. How much, for instance, in a union, you have, for instance, a, um, a fiscal equalization scheme or uh, something like that. So to stabilize the system, here you see it, you need some common body which executes this. It, and this uh, body has to be controlled democratically. You cannot leave this for the future, well, for a year or two maybe, but not for the next 10 or 15 or 20 years to the ECB alone. That will, in the end, destroy the system. So what we have at the moment is we have bought time. And now have the, uh, have the problems uh, diminish a little bit. That's the hope. And uh, the result is uh, not, so, uh, uh, not so clear. I give you some figures here unemployment rates. That is, is Spain, that is Greece, unemployment over 25 percent, I would say, for the next 10 years it cannot go forever, that will destroy the society. That is a remedy for revolution or social unrest. So, problems not solved, but there is a, here, that is Portugal, but it is this island. Ireland is on a good way. No problem. They have the problems with the banking system, but as you see here, there is a tendency uh, that uh, um, the problems in uh, uh, Ireland, especially unemployment, uh, unemployment problems, uh, diminish over the time. And well, we can say, well, in three or four or five years, uh, Island will reach its pre-crisis level of under five percent. So, um, uh, sorry, use use. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, use unemployment. Sixty percent. Can you imagine in Canada if you use unemployment of sixty percent? Uh, uh, I think your government would be out of the office within a few days uh, if you publish uh, those figures. Well, you can say, well, in southern Europe it's maybe a little bit different. First of all, unemployment rate, this unemployment rate is calculated on those young people who are not in schools. But nevertheless, you are not at school up to 25. So even if you calculate this, uh, there's a high unemployment rate. Or you say, well, in those countries, you have, uh, like as uh, 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 Italians say, an economia sommersa, underwater economy. So or in English, you say black economy is a, uh, is a blunt expression. Yeah. Well, you can say, well, the unemployment rate is not so high as the statisticians uh, say. Well, then maybe you can tolerate it. But on the other hand, I'm not quite sure that you can uh, the rest explain by black markets. 
Now the competitiveness. Competitiveness means that your prices are okay. You can improve your competitiveness by either improving the quality of your products or by diminishing the prices. Improving your products for, uh, for an economy as a whole is a very long process. You have to invest not only in machinery, you have to invest in education and the rate of return, if there is a rate of return which I think, will become at the end of the process. So it's a process of 10, 15 years or so to really uh, 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 improve the competitiveness by innovation, by investment. Most changes in competitiveness to the positive and the negative side are done by the prices. So the prices are, are what, uh, what count. And here is the situation of Spain, the relative increase in prices in Spain, relative, not absolute, relative to the competitors. And you see there's an increase in prices of uh, 80 percent up to 100, that is Lehman Brothers, that means an increase of prices of 25 percent relative to the rest uh, of uh, your competitors, that is a lot. What happened afterwards during the rescue period? Well, the prices went down, but not as much as, uh, uh, the, uh, as, uh, to the, uh, as to the point of the beginning of this process. There's a calculation of uh, uh, Goldman Sachs concerning uh, the long-term equilibrium, and that is here. Minus 30. Minus 30, says Lehman Brothers, not in one year, maybe in 10 years, but they have reached five years. Well, five percent. Uh, well, look to other countries. Portugal, same situation. Greece, same situation. France, nobody speaks about France. I think this is a real problem because the other economy is, well, Spain, but Greece is not so important. That is not uh, what will destroy the, the euro or the eurozone. But France, uh, not only because of political reasons, but uh, of economic reasons, but because of political reasons, is important. Without France, you cannot solve it. So that is the task of Hollande today. And uh, I'm not quite sure whether he is aware of uh, 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 what he has to do, because during the first months of uh, the Hollande uh, uh, administration, they walked in the opposite direction. So that is Italy. Italy, what can concern well, could be solved if they will. The difference is not so much. So. Uh, uh, if you look at the figures, not at the political situation, you can say, well, no problem in Italy. If they want to reform the country, then they will have success in a reasonable time. With the others, especially um, Spain and Greece, I'm uh, not so optimistic. But, well, maybe uh, uh, there is a way to do it. So, but there's another case, and there's Ireland. And you see here, very interested, Ireland, uh, the, the prices uh, rose relatively high to this uh, point here. But this point is 06. The Irish crisis, or the Irish bubble burst before the rest, before Lehman Brothers. So the Irish were in the, in the position that they had to react because at that time nobody would help them. And they did react. 115, uh, 110 or so to, uh, to 90, well, the exact calculation is minus 15%. Within a very short time, you see here within three years or so, and 
island reached uh, the, uh, the, the goal when the others in 010 came into the crisis. So for, uh, for, uh, for um, Ireland there is no longer a problem. They have of course a, lo uh, a lot debt in their banking system which became sovereign debt. But they have not the problem of, uh, um, uh, of uh, uh, becoming um, uh, uh, competitive. So and now, case of Germany. You see that is Germany more and more competitive because, well, the wages did not rose so much and the reforms of Schroeder. Well, here in the last years, there is no longer this tendency, but Germany must, must increase the prices. Well, so that is the task before us. Minus 10, minus 20 percent, up to minus 30 here, plus 30 here. Well, theoretically, no problem. But in a currency union, it's a problem. In a, the system of flexible exchange rate, it would be done by the exchange rate. But now, it's only, you have to do it in the real economy. And that is a little bit uh, more um, uh, difficult. For those who have to be more competitive, this means, and that's the only way, austerity. There is no possibility to avoid it. So, and that is very unpopular. And as you know, we know it from Keynes uh, time, <laughs> well, the, uh, the flexibility down is not very, uh, uh, very high, so uh, maybe it's impossible. Or it takes a very, very long time. On the other side, uh, the, uh, the case of Ireland, it is possible, but maybe it has something to do not with, uh, with uh, economic theory, but with political um, uh, situations um, in the different uh, uh, parts of the world. Ireland was an open economy, English uh, or Anglo-Saxon influence, uh, always more flexible as, uh, for instance, the, uh, 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 the other countries and uh, in the south. Uh, and you have uh, um, uh, another example where it works, it is the Baltic states, um, uh, Estonia and Latvia, and to some extent Lithuania, um, behaved like they were in the euro, so they stabilized uh, uh, the euro uh, uh, currency rate, euro to the national currency, and they uh, uh, cut the prices in our, uh, within uh, 18 months by 20 percent, and they were re-elected. Exception Lithuania, where the government changed that afterwards. So, why Baltic state? Yes, small countries, very flexible, they had uh, the experience of the Soviet time, and so they were, uh, the governments were able to convince or persuade the electorate to do this. Well, look at the trade figures, foreign trade of Greece experts, you see fall in experts, crisis, well, experts go up, that is what uh, the, uh, the Greek government says. No problem. We are increasing our exports, but they have not reached the pre-crisis level or the pre-crisis trend. So that is not a proof of uh, um, being uh, competitive. Well, that is imports. And the government says, well, problems are nearly solved. The foreign account deficit is nearly zero. There is one. They say, okay, but look, this was the pre-crisis uh, level or difference, and there is no improvement. What? What does that mean? People cannot import so much because of the collapse of the economy. And the uh, government in Greece says, well, we have to have growth. If they have growth, 
and the, uh, the, the country becomes more and more, um, uh, 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 the income in the country increases, that is what the, what the politician in Greece want, and of course the population, then the imports will again rise and the problem is not solved. So the competitiveness is not so what the uh, politicians say that the, uh, the competitiveness has increased is a result of the crisis, not the solution of the crisis. Next. Huh? Well, that is uh, the debt uh, 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 GDP ratio, that is the German chart. I have not found the uh, English one. You see here, haircut. That is the uh, uh, end of 2013. That is the projection of the uh, uh, IMF, uh, which uh, normally uh, 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 is a little bit optimistic. So <laughs> the debt problem is not solved. And therefore, you need some sort of, a, uh, uh, of another haircut to call it this or well, uh, to a bankruptcy, which no longer harms the market because there is no longer private investor involved, because more than 80% of Greek debt is now held by public institutions. So in the end, it's a taxpayer who will suffer in case of a bailout, because the bankruptcy came too late. It would be different if this process of cutting Greek debt would be uh, 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 would have been earlier. Then you had, can get the private investors. They would lose their money, but because of handling the prices, we gave the private investor, or most of the private investors, a chance to go away and to transfer their personal investment risk to the taxpayer. So you have to cut debt in Greece, but now not by the original investors, the private investors, and that is a problem, the distributional problem. Uh, the investors are going out uh, of uh, the game without uh, any loss or only a small loss. Now, uh, uh, the situation in, in Spain, much more better. They have reached, they, have, uh, they are over the pre-crisis level, they have reached the old trend, but that is not enough because exports were not so high as they should have been because of the import tent trends. But, as in uh, Greece, you have a, a decrease in imports and you have a surplus. Here it might work in, uh, in Spain, but uh, it's a long way. The situation in Spain is much more better than in Greece. They are on the right way, but what means the right way? It means it's five years, ten years, nobody knows. That's Ireland. As you see, a totally different. So, so there are imports. You see, the imports. Well, okay, the exports are rising, 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 and if you look at the t uh, trend, I have not, uh, uh, it's not in the picture, a green line, then you say, well, the case of island is solved, no problem. And you can say, well, all these figures, uh, which uh, are derived of this uh, go uh, 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 Goldman Sachs uh, uh, research, is uh, maybe uh, uh, you can argue against, but look at uh, the labor costs, all inclusive, includes social security. And you look, there are the crisis countries in the uh, in the uh, south, and because I'm living uh, at the East European border, my neighbors, for instance, the Czech Republic, Poland, have lower wages. Look at the comparison Poland-Greece. Poland 6.6 euros per hour, Greece still 14.7. You cannot say, and nobody would say, that the Greek economy is two and a half times more productive than the Polish economy. That would 
um, uh, that were to balance these figures. Maybe it's the other way around. And the problem of the Eurozone in the South is not that their wages are too high compared with German wages, but in their league, they are not competitive because, because of the unification of Europe and globalization. Their, re, their competitors are now in the East, which, are, uh, which accept lower wages and have a higher productivity. Or you can compare Greece with Turkey. The same corruption, the same problems as in Greece, but Turkey was, well, up to the last months, competitive. Same sum, uh, same ar archaeological sites, no problem. Why? The wages in Turkey were, were one half of the wages in Greece. That is a real problem. You cannot reduce the wages. You can increase the wages, what uh, our eastern neighbors are not uh, uh, so, uh, 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 they, they know, the, would know the consequences, and therefore they don't do it. So, uh, but there is one example, Slovenia, and maybe that will be the next case of the Euro crisis. So what the, uh, the diagnosis is, we have the wrong COP in the south because the rescue uh, policy, as I said, uh, cures not the causes. The crisis has, especially in the case of, of uh, Greece, maybe also in the ca uh, case of Spain, worsened the crisis because of depression. But because goods and labor markets were not flexible enough, which is necessary in the currency union. But on the other hand, the austerity had worked in other countries. So, you, so I have you to realign the prices. And what I say is, you cannot solve the price by lending money in a family. So that will destroy. We cannot build a Europe with creditors and debtors. You cannot uh, uh, have a, uh, your uh, 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 Canadian federations when there would be interstate uh, credit uh, that would destroy the federation. And therefore we have to reduce this sort of policy to give credit to hope for good years you have to give, pay transfers. My father always said, no, in, his, uh, in the family, no credit, no guarantees. If you want to help him, give him the money. Full stop. Otherwise, it will destroy the family. So what are the problems to solve? You have to reduce excessive public debts of the past in the periphery. You have to restore competitiveness and to avoid this in the future European Central State. Let's begin with the debt. What is the uh, possibility to release the debt? Repayment of the debtors in case of all these uh, countries. The so rich out of the countries. You can tax the workers, you increase uh, uh, consumption taxes, or you can tax uh, um, reality, because those cannot uh, leave the country. They cannot take uh, 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 the land with them. But what is, could be done is done. Oh, sorry. So we can give debt release or cut. You could say, well, the old creditors have to pay. Well, well, we avoid this, and we avoid this especially because of the banks. Because when we do this, and the bank are not enough capitalized, we get a banking problem. And therefore, the, banking, the banks at the moment are able to, uh, um, uh, to, uh, 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 well, uh, um, to, yeah, we we'll say blackmail uh, the states to rescue them. Because without rescue, you have a banking problem. 
and that was done in the few, in the past. Maybe a little bit too uh, too much. There are other cases where it worked. And normally, you in, uh, uh, you stabilize the banking system that you say, well, if the bank is nearly bankrupt, then the big creditors became shareholders, a debt equity swap. Then the problem of the bank is solved, and uh, the creditors are owners of the bank. Good chance. But we haven't done this. We have done this only in the case of, uh, of uh, Cyprus. We have to do it, but very difficult. The other huge public, uh, public transfers from the credit countries to the, uh, the taxpayers, well, that is not a, a, a program for being re-elected. And the other, what is possible, whether it worked or not, is other question, inflation or low interest rates. That is what the ECB uh, wants to have. Inflation is not possible at the moment, but they want to have an interest rate of zero. That is a favor for those who have debt. For the credit is uh, the other way. You must know that uh, two-thirds of uh, the outside wealth of Germany are uh, claims against the ECB system. So that is, uh, so we have to do it, that, but that would reduce, and I say it's unavoidable uh, to uh, reduce part of the outside debt of Germany and in other uh, uh, countries uh, 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 as well. Well, in reality, mostly there is a compromise of all this, but uh, you have to uh, concentrate on the last two points. So, return competitiveness. Austerity in the South did not work, or in some cases did not work. Massive inflation in the North. Well, that is a theoretical solution, but do the prices go on in the North? Not at the moment. You can print a lot of money. If there are no more expenditure, there is no increase in inflation, so at the moment it does not work. Yeah, and the other is an external devaluation and revaluation, this means the euro exit. If you say because of political reasons that is not possible, that is the only way. There is no other solution. But if this works, a or B or C or D. In all cases, a reduction of exports in the case of Germany and a huge right of, of losses. Without this, the Eurozone cannot survive. And on the other side, therefore, an increase of competitive over the price uh, mechanism. But no credit finance growth. Political option, that is not uh, 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 the center of my talk today, but I will say it, uh, muddling through that we are doing, centralized Europe state, United States of Europe, decentralized Europe, or abolition of the euro. Well, let's keep uh, alternative eight and four. <coughs> we have to concentrate on two and three, and that is what we have to discuss in Europe. And that is building a federal state. A centralized federal state or a decentralized federal state. Let's say the first United States of Europe. So that means strong European government, centralization of economic, fiscal, and social policy, like in your country, uh, like uh, in the US or in Switzerland. That means uh, the EG budget must be multiplied by 10. Because otherwise, you have not enough power to stabilize uh, regional uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 disequilibriums. And you need, on top of this, a European social security system, and, uh, 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 and that uh, means also European labor laws, because uh, a lot of stabilizing in your country or in other federal countries is done not by direct transfers, 
from one state to the other, or from the uh, federation to the, uh, to the state, vertically or horizontally, but also through the uh, social security system. If there is in one uh, part of uh, your country unemployment, in the other part there is uh, uh, a boom, then in the end, uh, by the uh, uh, workers and uh, employers of the boom area, part of uh, the transfers uh, uh, to the unemployed in the other area are paid, and that is a stabilizing system. That is necessary. Horizontal and vertical transfer system, you have all the problems in your country too, you know it. And if you bail out, then you need supervision. Uh, as Americans do not have this supervision, and you also, as far as I know, you have no supervision in your country. Well, it means in, if uh, in the extreme, well, a commissioner instead of an elected government. That is the, uh, the, uh, the necess necessity for a bailout system, because without this, you have the problem of moral asset. So you have to, if you want to have a, no, a bailout system instead of a no bailout system, you have to be more centralized than um, a system uh, without it. And most of the federations in the world have a no bailout system to avoid this problem between center and uh, uh, sub-government, uh, uh, sub-national government uh, entities. So the problem is for all this you need a, a change of the treaties. All uh, parliaments of all 28 uh, member states, not only the EU member, have to agree. I think it's impossible. Look at the British um, situation there. We think, well, we agree when we get something back. So uh, at the moment, you cannot do this. And the only thing I think is uh, the only possibility, I think, well, for a medium term is that you can do this for core countries, no, not for the, uh, the whole EU. The other is subsidiarity uh, system like in Switzerland and comparable to, to your system. That means we have to go back to no bailout. We have to allow bankruptcies of states and banks. We have to take away some of the responsibilities which were not in the treaties, but which uh, uh, the ECB had to, uh, uh, had to, to execute, uh, because they, you have now an uh, elected uh, central system, and you have to uh, capitalize the banks, and uh, you have a centralization of supervision of the banks. Okay, and m perhaps, if this all does not work, you have to have a plan B, and it means a temporary uh, 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 exit, that means every country can come back. They are not excluded, that is possible, and uh, economically and especially politically and legally, but that would be another, uh, uh, another possibility. Some economists uh, have other uh, similar uh, options. Uh, uh, I will not discuss this, that would be a, uh, the next talk maybe if you want. And therefore, thank you for your attention. It's a little bit complicated. And you see what is necessary if you f do some sort of federation without really establishing a federal state. So what had to be done in the beginning to think about how to build Europe has to be done now to resolve the crisis. And that is the only possibility we have. And I hope that after the European elections, my government will begin this discussion in Europe. We have not so much time. Otherwise, people would be, become very angry and discontent uh, with their governments. And therefore, I hope that um, uh, uh, this uh, exit, not out of the euro, but the exit out of the crisis will be found by our governments. But the way will be very long and success is not guaranteed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, sorry. We have time for just a few questions, from what I'm told. Uh, so I don't know, given uh, Professor Milbrandt's uh, presentation, if there are questions. 
Yes, Mario. Actually, I have a couple of questions. <laughs> if I'm permitted, I'll ask uh, two questions, mm -hmm. not just one. Uh, the first one, I mean, I completely agree with you when you talked about the need for a federal state and all that. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, you need some authority that can not only deal with macroeconomic policies across, the, you know, the whole region rather than, you know, one entity at the time. That's an impossible task, and I completely agree with you. And I think the current situation, which is that you have the, uh, the ECB as the fiscal authority of last resort, in a sense, is, is, is sort of, a, I could see it only as a temporary measure and not something that can persist at all. In fact, what I want to ask you, however, uh, is uh, this thing, not, not the fact that it's a kind of firefighter just trying to extinguish, you know, where it can, uh, but there have been, uh, there's been a lot of debate about the legal status of the ECB in engaging in what it's doing, uh, which is, a, there are moral hazard problems, you know, uh, given its current behavior, in a sense, and I would like to, first question, which is to ask you, because I know they've been literally in court, they've been, you know, over this issue, uh, if you could perhaps provide more information about the legal status of the ECB in doing what it's doing. The second question that I have has to do with the fact that the uh, I, I really have a problem with this, uh, your solution of this competitiveness problem. I mean, we have that in every country. I mean, there are no optimal currency areas in the world, really. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Republic of San Marino or Liechtenstein, but any large country, clearly there's no such a thing. So you're always going to have a lot of differences in competitiveness across regions as we do in this country as well. Uh, and, and it does not lead to that problem, therefore, because we're also, you know, we only have a single currency here. Uh, now, what my concern, though, is more in terms of the, your solution to that, which is that all you have to do is do like Ireland and do it even as well or better than them. Now, I could see a small country like Ireland trying to deflate, in a sense, in implementing austerity, draconian sort of yes, sir, sir. austerity measures here. But when you do it all collectively, if you take the whole southern flank, and even France right now with Hollande doing that, don't you actually uh, get into the Keynes problem? Who is going to buy these goods? I mean, if you're at the end of the road here, are you just going to create the whole problem across the whole region, uh, you know, of the Eurozone? Yes, I, uh, uh, I agree with you. Um, uh, let me uh, uh, concentrate on the, the last two questions, that is the legal uh, problem with the ECB and the society problem. Of course you are right. To turn the clock back is very, very uh, problematic. But if you have a, a currency union, which does not which means that you have no foreign exchange mechanism, that is the, the solution, is the only possibility you have. And even in a united country, you have different uh, developments. Let's go to the United States, which I know a little bit better than your country. If there is a problem in the automotive industry in, this, in Detroit, well, then the automotive industry goes bust, well, not yet because of uh, uh, help of uh, the government. People become unemployed. So the first transfer system works, social security. Uh, unemployment uh, uh, security. Um, then you have a second mechanism in a unified country that is migration. People leave, destro uh, leave destroyed and go, let's say, to California because in California it's booming. There could be a possibility in the Eurozone as well, we had it in uh, between Eastern and Western Europe, uh, 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 Germany, which was a sort of currency union in the beginning too. And uh, East Germany uh, lost one million out of uh, 60 million inhabitants, and most of them is a productive uh, younger uh, age. Which solved, in a way, not all, but solved the unemployment process or the unemployment problem in, for instance, Saxony. I was in, in power at that time. I always said, well, uh, 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 we have to uh, uh, create new jobs. 
but it was not possible to create so much so quickly, so fast. So we had to accept that a lot of young people move to the West, but this does not happen in the same quantity or percentage in a very diverse um, uh, structure like Europe. You need qualified people, and qualification means language qualification as well. So no, we have no longer the possibilities which we had in Germany, West Germany, uh, in the 60s, that uh, untrained workers came from the southern periphery, uh, get a crash course of 14 days, and uh, uh, standing at a machine and pushing a button. Okay, that was the, uh, the situation 50 years ago, but now you have to integrate in a very uh, um, uh, technical, uh, uh, highly capitalized um, uh, economy. And uh, uh, well, there is an, an increase of migration from the south to the north, but the figures I have uh, seen yet are yet not comparable, for instance, to American figures or even inter-German figures. And in my country, most of the migration does not come from the south, but from the east. So it is, in a way, a, 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 a part of the solution, okay. And if you, uh, first a flexibility, second migration, third transfer system. And that is what all uh, uh, United countries or federations do in one way or the other. But that means that you have a central government. Without a central government, it cannot work. What we are doing at the European level, because it's not possible because of the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, the, the treaty is uh, to have a, uh, uh, such a central government, a central European government. The Commission is not a central European government. <coughs> um, we try to increase the cooperation uh, among the member states, avoiding a centralization. But that is not the solution for the, uh, uh, for, for the future. You can do it. But you have to answer the question of sovereignty. And this is the, uh, how in, Deutsch, in Germany it's lackmus, uh, so that is uh, the important uh, questions to solve. Now to the legal status. The German, or um, a lot of German uh, uh, lawyers are, have the opinion uh, uh, that uh, the ECB is overstepping their mandate. And uh, uh, there was a ruling uh, of uh, as a, a constitutional court some days ago, that they say that is overstepping of their competences, but because of the situation in, um, in uh, 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 Europe, they brought the case to the European Court of Justice but only that the European just, uh, uh, judges give advice not to decide the case. The, uh, the, uh, the situation is though that uh, uh, the Constitutional Court in Germany says that it's illegal. The German authority and the Bundesbank are no longer allowed to execute this policy. Then it goes to the European judges. Maybe they say it's allowed. Then it goes back to the, UP, uh, to the German Constitutional Court, and the German Constitutional Court has to decide, which has not yet done, is that the uh, uh, Jews say uh, the Latin word um, uh, ultra virus. Is that overstepping the competency, and the uh, result is illegality, not legal, yeah, illegality. So that is a very interesting uh, uh, judicial case. I'm not an expert uh, in, um, uh, in judicial questions, but uh, that is what I have understood uh, uh, of this process. Uh, now the second question was, uh, uh, sorry, I've, uh, yeah, that was the second question, and uh, I cannot give you an answer yet. I personally think it is an overstepping of uh, uh, the, um, uh, 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 the competencies, 
and that is not illegal. It was necessary because of the, uh, the governments did not act. But that is not a legal excuse. You cannot broke your, the law because others don't act. Only in a very extreme case you can allow this uh, uh, if you are uh, believing in the rule of law. But on the other side there is a, 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 a proverb in the Latin, um, fiat justitia periat mundi, do justice uh, and uh, the world is destroyed. So you can uh, choose what uh, answer is, is better. <laughs> Uh, maybe one last question. Yes, at the back. Uh, yeah, do you have any <clears throat> thoughts or comments on a comparison between the ECB program of bailouts and monetary expansion, credit expansion in the South, and the current Fed program of, of, of continuous bond buying and monetary expansion? And, and can they both end without the economies in the U.S.? and and Europe sort of collapsing, perhaps for different reasons, because one is a federal state and the other is, is not. But do you have any thoughts on that? The other point might be the adjustment mechanism. I think there's been some work done at, by an economist at Harvard that you might be able to affect internal adjustment within Europe by reducing business taxes and other t in the South and maybe imposing uh, certain types of taxes, including export taxes in the north, to, to readjust the competitiveness. But that probably wouldn't be a full solution, but w do you have yes, any thoughts on that? It would be illegal uh, under the treaties, because it would harm international uh, 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 state, uh, uh, commerce between the states. It's not allowed, uh, well, you could uh, 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 raise uh, uh, custom, uh, 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 custom taxes at, at, at the border, but that would be the structure of uh, the idea of a common market. So, uh, and that is a problem. We do it in one respect. That is a very problematic case, is, is the case of Cyprus. We have these four freedoms, which is the basis of uh, uh, the economic union. It's f uh, free movement of capital, free movement of labor, free movement of goods, and free movement of services. And we have suspended free movement of capital in the Cypriot case. So if you have a Cypriot euro, you cannot transfer it to the rest of the euro. So you have two euros, one uh, Cypriot euro and the rest. And if you want to transfer it, you have to pay a discount of 10 to 20 percent. So you have some sort of an exchange rate in the eurozone. And you see how problematic it is to use this uh, means. Of course, theoretically, you can do it. But uh, you have to look uh, for the next stage. It, uh, uh, certain measures will destroy the whole structure. So you have to be very, very careful. Um, what the, uh, you can, done, uh, can do is, of course, uh, you can uh, uh, reduce uh, 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 in some way by uh, technical or uh, uh, fiscal measures competi uh, competitiveness, competitiveness, but that has to be done by the national parliaments. Yeah, well, uh, I wish you good luck to go to the German Bundestag and say to the, uh, to the member of parliament, well, enact laws uh, to reduce your competi uh, competitiveness, to accept more unemployment. Well, they won't do it because uh, they want uh, to be re-elected. So, we are not a technocratic system, we are in a uh, democratic system and that means in the end consent of the voter. In some cases, it's not a good idea to ask for consent, but that is our rule as Democrats. And therefore, we have to find a democratic solution, not only a technocratic solution. Technocratic solution, I agree with you. There could be uh, some uh, uh, possibilities, and uh, I'm uh, quite sure that we will agree on this, that they will work. But uh, not all what you can done, you are allowed to do in a democracy. That is the bitter truth.
Okay. Uh, we will have to end here, unfortunately. <clears throat> I'm sure there are other questions, and uh, I'm sure Professor Milbrad would probably be able to go on uh, about this, this passionate uh, topic. Uh, Professor, thank you so much uh, for coming here and, and talking to us and explaining, in a way, what is a, a very complex issue, and, and certainly the challenges uh, that the Euro and the European Union uh, are facing uh, in, in the coming years, and hopefully, uh, the solutions that you have put forward uh, will actually materialize, although the challenges are certainly uh, quite, uh, quite, quite tall. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, but uh, uh, there is an optimistic view. The euro was never in danger. Your countries, your banks in the European, uh, in the eurozone were in danger. And the euro, uh, what is in danger is uh, maybe uh, our model of uh, building Europe. But you have to uh, distinguish between euro zone and European Union. I live in an area where all my neighbors are not members of the euro. And my impression is that with these members, the Czechs, the Slovaks, the Poles, Slovak, not the Czechs and Poles, we have at the moment better relation than with those countries in the Eurozone because we, between Germany on the one side and the, uh, and the North and the Eastern countries who are outside the Euro, there is more convergence than in the Eurozone and the theory was totally different. With the euro of convergence and outside your the euro of divergence, but well, the theory is not true. We cannot change reality. We have to change our theory, and that is what my personal impressions are. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much.